you know, the Met fan is intense these days, as you, as you can well imagine. Uh, were you shocked when you heard that the Mets uh, were able to trade Justin Verlander and Max Scherzer? You know, it's interesting because I kind of have a different take on it because I view it through the eyes of some of the younger players. Because I remember when I got called up, um, you know, the opportunity that I got to play right away and to try to prove myself, you know, I'll always remember that feeling. So when I heard about the trades, you know, my first thought were towards some of these younger players on the team that are now going to have to step up and prove themselves. And you have the rest of this year to be part of the solution moving forward to where you show the front office and ownership that, hey, I'm going to be a reason why we turn this around. Um, and they're getting an extended um you know, to be able to go out there and get at bats or innings pitch where you might not have gotten them had you still had some of these veteran guys. Um, I think it's going to be a good opportunity for these young guys to go out there and, and prove themselves and say, hey, um, you know, for me as a third baseman, hey, I'm going to take over third base and make sure that third base isn't a question mark going into next year. You know, year. it's interesting you bring up third base because our third baseman just got sent mm -hmm. down, Brett Beatty. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering, had that ever happened to you? And if you know, why does something like this happen to a young player? Well, I think every young player should go through some sort of adversity in their career. And you would hope that it happens in the minor leagues where you go through an extended time of, of, of slumping because I think that's what separates, you know, the players that turn out developmentally better than others is guys that have slumped and know that they can get out of that slump. Um, and Brett, unfortunately, had to go through it at, you know, one of the biggest on one of the biggest sports stages in the world in New York. Um, but, you know, I think it's, he's going to be stronger for it. I think he's going to go down. He's going to dominate. We'll probably see him again this year. And I think he'll, you know, I think this little bump in the road is actually going to be good for him long term because he's going to understand that he can come out of this slump a better player. All right. Now on the flip side, David Wright with us. Battle of the Badges to at City Field Thursday night. Go to MLB.com. You can search Battle of the Badges. Go to the Mets website for tickets. What about the veterans? So we were talking about this. We know they make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. They're out there every day. Dog days of summer, August, September, kind of out of it. What is it like for, and we saw Nimmo had issues. You know, he seemed like he was really upset by the whole thing. What is it like for Lindor, even a guy like Pete Alonzo, when you see these guys sent out? Oh, it's, there's no doubt about it. There's no sugarcoating. It sucks. I mean, it's, um, when you have those types of expectations and you come in and, and every, every guy in that <clears throat> locker room will tell you the same thing that, you know, it's been a very disappointing year. Um, you know, but when you look at it and a guy like Lindor is a little different because I think what he said was perfect that, you know, he signed up for, to, for sustainability. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, in order to do that, um, you know, unfortunately you have to make some of the decisions that were made, you know, recently where you stockpile the farm system. And, you know, again, uh, I don't think there's many owners out there that'll do what Steve Cohen did to, you know, pay down a lot of those salaries to get better players in return. So, um, you know, I think when, when you load up that farm system and, you know, do they hit? Do they not? Who knows? But when you give yourself more of an opportunity with that farm system to develop those core players, and then you start sprinkling in some free agents, I think that's how you uh, win and sustain winning uh, over a long period of time. And I think that's exactly what Francisco Francisco Lindor signed up. You know, what you were talking about, like Steve Cohen ate $100 million. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he basically bought a minor league baseball team. That's what he did. I'm just wondering if Billy Epler... And maybe in your mind, uh, the way I looked at it, there were two plans. Plan A would be everybody played well, played to the back of their baseball card, and we are a relevant baseball team. But there, there had to come some point of reality, a line where once they crossed it, they said, you know, here we got to go to plan B now. I can get rid of these guys, but we're going to have to eat the money. But in, but in return, we're going to get top end talent to restock our farm team. I'm just wondering if that would be a thought process at the beginning of the year that they got to this point where they had to employ plan B. It wouldn't have been a thought process in the clubhouse, that's for sure. Yeah. But um, to be able to pivot like that as quickly as they did, um, you know, I'm sure, uh, you know, probably wasn't the most popular thing to do, you know, when you have that kind of payroll to tear it down and, um, you know, kind of get some of those younger players. But, um, you know, it shows kind of the dedication that, that the organization has, you know, to maybe a little more of a longer term uh, view, which I think should excite Mets fans. Because, you know, again, if you look at, you know, the teams that I've been on, uh, you know, across town, the Yankees, you know, the success that they've had a lot, you know, the majority of it is homegrown. And I think there's also something to be said about when you develop a player, there's a different meaning when you put that uniform on.